This is a story about when I played Bobby Fischer at chess. In 1971, me and Ed Garvin went to New York to play in the National High School Chess Championship. Uh, when we got to New York, we met Randy Dollinger from North Carolina. And before the tournament opened, we had to stay on the second floor of the McAlpine Hotel, which was right next door to the Empire State Building. Um, and after we got to the floor, there was really nothing much for us to do. And, and Ed Garvin and Randy Dollinger decided that they wanted to go ride the subway, and so they took off to ride the subway. So I was left alone, and I had nothing to do. So I decided that to entertain myself, I would play some blindfold chess games. And so I started out to play two blindfold chess games against two gentlemen from Alaska and both of them had ratings around 1800. And I was doing pretty well in both games and winning both games probably. And then from the corner of my eye, I noticed there was a gentleman that was watching. And so I was already doing really well in those games and so I became very confident and I asked him if he would like to play. And he said, um, no, no, thank you. And I said, oh, don't be a baby. Um, come on and try to play. So. He decides after all that he will try and play. So he sets up the pieces and uh, the first game, um, he ends up winning and I'm sh shocked. I lost the game. And so we played another game and I lost again. And so that was kind of shocking. And so this thing continued for a while and then I noticed that all around were hundreds of people. Um, there was people everywhere and they were all watching the simultaneous. And so I thought, my God, I must have overdone this. And so suddenly everything got really quiet and no one in the room said anything. And so I was sitting there concentrating on the games and one guy ended up speaking to somebody else and he says, why is everybody watching him? And of course I thought they were talking about me, of course. And the other guy said, well, have you ever heard of Bobby Fisher? And then I thought about it for a minute and I says, well, I'm not Bobby Fisher. And then as my mind started to search through things, I remembered that the person I had seen in the corner of my eye to my left was the same picture that was on the last issue of Chess Life and Review. And it was Bobby Fisher. I immediately turned around and I saw it was him. And I asked him if he would like to play some five minute chess games. And I immediately quit playing the simultaneous blindfold immediately. And he was kind of shocked and said, well, does anyone have a chess clock? And someone threw a clock over the crowd. And so then we had a chess clock. And so we began to play. And we played 10, 15, 20 games. And I lost every game. He would sacrifice queens and, um, and all kinds of fancy things. Eventually in one game, he somehow lost a queen. And he says, well, what happened? And I says, I don't know. And he looks down at the clocks and I had used four and a half minutes and he had used less than a minute. And so then he just started moving his king and my time ran out before I could checkmate him. And I was just chasing his king and I wasn't even close to checkmating him. Um, and so that was the only game that I was actually had any chance of winning at all in the whole, in the whole match. Um, during the whole time, um, Randy Dollinger and Ed Garvin had come back and I'm not sure where Ed was but Randy came through the door and he saw me uh, through the people on, on the side and he screamed Charles is playing Bobby Fisher and he ran to my feet and he crawled through the crowd and he got to my feet and he begged me to let him play Bobby Fisher and I was afraid of losing control of the situation and I wouldn't let him play. Eventually, after we played around 20 or 30 games, uh, Bobby Fisher said he was tired and we quit. And then after that, we sat and we talked to Bobby Fisher for a while and we showed him some games we had played and asked him some questions about his World Championship match about Spassky that was coming up and what he thought his chances were and things like that. Um, and he was real friendly and um, he answered our questions and that was the end of, the, uh, of us playing. Um, after that and rest of the tournament, um, some people saw Bobby Fisher in an elevator or a time or two. Uh, but as far as I know, he never came back to the tournament hall after that. And that was the last time I saw Bobby Fisher.
Um, and thank you. And uh, if you get a chance, please subscribe. Thanks.